Fallout 4 just got a brand new DLC sized mod that I think quite a few of you are going to like. Attack of the Lobotomites will reintroduce the New Vegas favorite Lobotomites with a new lore friendly quest and dungeon into Fallout 4's Commonwealth. And this mod's particularly cool because it strikes a nice tri pronged benefit. Firstly, the quest itself. On the south side of the Commonwealth, you'll find a new Braintree Mental Rehabilitation Center. This place will be infested with some new and mysterious enemies, who are of course going to be the Lobotomites from Fallout New Vegas. They've had all their organs replaced with bionic alternatives but there was an unfortunate side effect where they got lobotomized in the process which effectively turned them into mindless bionic zombies. Not fun. The quest will have you uncovering how lobotomites ended up on the east coast in the first place, but also specifically what went wrong in this rehab center, including some unique choices that you can make all along the way that will impact which rewards you get. The quest itself is fun and concise, but what really propels this mod forward is the dungeon and the enemies. You're trapped in a rehab center with a bunch of bionic zombies. Several of these bionic zombies have some pretty unique and special abilities, and sometimes they're just a sad state of affairs. The dungeon itself is broken up into several different wings, each of these featuring its own theme, and of course they are infested with different types of lobotomites. There's going to be a wide array of different outfits and armors that the lobotomites can use, and a bunch of new melee weapons. In many ways, this mod is a weapon and armor pack, and this is very nicely distributed to you because you'll just find these items on these lobotomites as you're facing them. And the mod does strike a pretty cool balance where at points you genuinely feel bad for the enemies that you're fighting, but you also may notice they act a little bit strange. The NPCs here will feature some different behaviors compared to other enemies in the commonwealth and oftentimes will try and ambush you rather than attacking one at a time. And particularly with higher difficulties, this dungeon could definitely be very threatening and you may have to change up your tactics a bit. But you also are able to loot the bionics off of the lobotomites for yourself, although this will come with a slight downside for them. All throughout the dungeon you'll discover that Big Mountain definitely has a presence here for some reason, which does get explained during the quest line. And while just getting a constant flow of new weapons and armors that you could use for yourself is very fun, this is actually elevated quite a bit because there are going to be four distinct boss fights throughout this dungeon. You'll have to face each boss in order to fully finish this quest, and each one's going to have a specific theme to go along with the mental rehab center and even unique armors and weapons. And of course, you are able to immediately loot and use for yourself. And it is that cohesive theme throughout this entire dungeon that just makes it a ton of fun. At points, it's just over the top, but also horrifying. And the quest will leave you with some very powerful rewards after a couple of major decisions you'll have to make. And then you just have the rewards. This mod will add in a ton of new armors, weapons, and even some new workshop items that you could use. Much of this newly added content has a bunch more customization with different modifications you can make, and you're left with a true bounty after this one as you'll be able to destroy the Commonwealth inhabitants in wholly new and sometimes familiar ways. Overall, this mod is just a ton of fun, and if you're somebody who's been hoarding up weapon mods, this is definitely the perfect new one to download and actually put them to use. Just like you'll probably use this new Fallout character mug. It'll make a perfect addition to your morning routine and features characters from all of the major Fallout games. You can pick it up for yourself just by clicking on this link under the video. Although if you are looking to make some larger overhauls to Fallout Force Commonwealth as well, Forced Evolution is another brand new mod that will significantly expand the Super Mutants. Do you ever find the various fights with Super Mutants somewhat samey? Encampment after encampment, but they all just kind of feel like you're fighting a big mutant enemy. Forced Evolution is attempting to fix that. It'll implement several new variants of Super Mutant into Fallout Force Commonwealth, making your encounters with them far more interesting and fun. Super Mutant Elites will be one of the most common of the new variants. These are larger and armored versions who are going to almost mimic powered armor enemies from other factions. So most often you'll find them using heavy weapons, including a newly added one just for this faction with the Plasma Blaster, a new heavy plasma weapon that packs a serious punch. A bit more unique are the Super Mutant Brainiacs, a cross between the FEV and Psionics. This incredibly powerful enemy will use their mind to fling rubble at you or just hit you with a radiating psionic blast, basically a gamma gun from their brain. These enemies are really impactful in combat because those rads can absolutely melt your health bar, which becomes a pretty big problem because the rest of the super mutants are very tanky and will also be attacking you. Although speaking of getting up close, there are also airborne mutants as this modified version of the self-committer has a rocket and fuel tank attached to their back, giving them the ability to literally launch themselves at you before exploding on impact. And how you view this enemy will vary greatly depending on which difficulty you play on. If you're on survival, this is the most horrifying thing in the entirety of Fallout 4. But if you don't play on survival, these things are just hilarious to watch them get ready and launch themselves at you. But all medical experimentation has to start somewhere, and with the FEV virus it began with rats. 
Newly added FEV rats will appear in the Commonwealth, oftentimes around some of the other super mutant hounds. It's described how the FEV testing began with rats and eventually they were just dumped into the Commonwealth. But last but not least, we also have the super mutant butchers. These are going to be mutants actually making all of those meat bags that you find around. And they'll effectively be a smaller but better equipped version of super mutant behemoths. They're going to have less HP but can hit you much harder. Overall, I absolutely love mods like this one. You put enough hours into Fallout 4 and lots of combat encounters become stale. But a mod like this just instantly breathes a ton of fresh life into places all over the commonwealth as these new enemies are integrated into nearly all of the existing super mutant locations. But the raiders can get pretty boring too, so we also have unique raider gangs and patrols. This will add in four new factions of raiders that will patrol certain sections of the commonwealth, each of these having their own new weapons and armors. The Junk Legion have adopted Spartan-inspired armors and tactics. They'll be extremely proficient with melee weapons and often feature spears of their own. And if they do manage to get up close to you, they can be quite the threat. Cyan's gang splintered off of a military platoon. You'll find them quite well equipped and all wearing cyan colored armors with unique markings indicating their rank. The Rail Raiders have claimed the railroad tracks around the Commonwealth as their own territory and even have quite a few tools to make sure things stay that way. And lastly, the Sunflare Cult. These guys are horrifying and never sleep, oftentimes also using flame weapons in the dark while they chase you down. Overall, this is a pretty simple mod, but another one that's just a lot of fun. It makes exploring around the Commonwealth just a bit more interesting as every once in a while you'll run into one of these new Raider gangs. And if you do successfully take them down, you'll get some new armors and weapons as a nice reward. But what I I think really takes this mod to the next level is these gangs are implemented as patrols, so there's going to be various sections of the commonwealth that they'll patrol around, so it's a piece of content that you'll encounter very organically just by playing. And that encounter will be far more interesting because these gangs are just way more interesting than many of the vanilla gangs you've killed numerous times already. Although with all of these new enemies, you probably also want some new weapon mods. A really awesome new release is the N99C, a new custom 10mm pistol that's meant to be a more compact and sleek design. This one will have a variety of customizations options so you can tweak the appearance as much as you want, and it'll even be integrated into the leveled list so other NPCs can spawn with it. But overall, it really is just a cooler looking alternative to the 10mm pistol that fits incredibly well into Fallout 4. But if you are looking for some more lore-friendly weapons, Degenerate Dak and the Commonwealth Story Expansion Project have been on an absolute tear releasing a ton of new content in this category. The automatic rifle will be a new BAR-styled weapon for Fallout 4, featuring high damage but with some serious recoil given it a nice balanced trade-off. The 38 machine pistol is a Mac 11 with even more in the way of customization options, as well as this one comes with a really great looking set of animations. But what has easily been one of my favorite of the new releases is the Riot pistol. Occupying a pretty similar role to the Mac 11, this one is just incredibly satisfying to use and occupies a nice spot in Fallout 4's level list as there just aren't that many auto pistol options in the vanilla game. But if you are looking for something a bit more special and unique, they also just dropped the grenade APW a semi-automatic grenade launcher with a wide array of different grenade types to use and be fired. Overall, with Commonwealth Weaponry Expansion, the Steam is effectively releasing a giant batch of lore-friendly weapon mods, but also really well-integrated weapon mods. Many of the weapons they just featured, as well as many more that they also released that I'm not highlighting here, have custom animations, a ton in the way of customization options, so you could really turn them into over-the-top weapons if you want to, and quite a few unique variants scattered around the Commonwealth with some special features tied to them. This team is releasing so many weapons I can't even cover them all. But if you're looking for lore-friendly weapons, this is easily the best option you have right now. But maybe you want a bit more of a buff up than just some new guns. Mutations is a really cool new mod that implements all of the Fault 76 mutations into Fallout 4. These will be implemented into the world in static locations as well as via new vendors that you'll naturally encounter over the course of the main story. And this mod is quite literally every single mutation from Fault 76 in Fallout 4. You can get things like Marsupial to jump high above your enemies, but this will come with a cost to your intelligence, or become an unarmed god with talons, which will increase your unarmed damage, but with a cost to agility. And there are a ton more. These mutations functionally act as lore-friendly traits that you can add to Fallout 4, and you can even remove these if you want to simply by taking a rat away or make them permanent with other chems. A really cool mod, and with how well it's implemented, I think this should be a permanent addition to many of your load orders, because even if you don't want to use it, it's nice to have the option. And the Fallout 4 New Vegas team even just dropped some new content for Fallout 4 as well, with Nuka Breaker and Rebar. Club. This will bring two of the iconic New Vegas weapons into Fallout 4 with a ton of modification options. 
so you can make it so the rebar club will pack a bit of a larger punch. But of course, there's also the Nuka Breaker sign that also has some customization options to change up its look and bonuses. And this too gets even a bit better because even if you don't want to use these weapons for yourself, they'll be implemented into the Super Mutant leveled list. And with the rebar club particularly, this just feels like the perfect weapon to be used by a Super Mutant and really makes those enemies a bit more interesting. But then with another brand new release, we have what may end up becoming the single best alternative fast travel mod for Fallout 4. The survivalist bus will be a brand new bus player home that you could find at the Lexington bus station, and this is a full-fledged player home. There's storage space for basically everything you could ask for, and even a bunch of built-in crafting tables for all of the major options. But it gets even better because the interior of this one is a proper workshop, so you can edit the interior layout if you want to. But where things really go to the next level is when you realize that no, this bus is functional and actually can be driven around the Commonwealth. You're able to charge the bus up with fusion cores, and then as you discover locations, have your driver take you there for a cost of time and charge. So there are individual locations all around the Commonwealth where you could park your bus and basically have a player home on the move. And you could even build a bus stop at your settlements and then use this handy bus remote to call it in while you're out adventuring. And in fact, you could use this remote anywhere and your bus will drive to the closest valid parking spot and wait for you there. And as cool as all that was, a proper mobile player home that can really make a huge difference for survival playthroughs, this mod even goes a bit further with a ton of additional customization options for the bus. Overall, really a fantastic mod that offers a ton in the way of function, and to me is really the perfect mod to add on to a survival playthrough. But did you know that Fallout 4 is also becoming more of an RPG? This thanks to modders using AI to improve the role-playing possibilities in-game. Check out this video to find out more.